The origin of Yantra tattoos on the body is shrouded in uncertainty, but historians generally believe it began around the 3rd century when Brahmins introduced Yantras to what is today modern Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar. However, protective tattoos more generally likely have deeper roots in Southeast Asia associated with pre-Buddhist and Hindu religious beliefs. But today we will mostly be focusing on the unique brand of tattooing known as Yantra tattoos, or more popularly called Sankyat in Thailand or Sankyon in Khmer, which is a tradition that blends ancient traditions of tattooing with Buddhist and Hindu religious expression, a tradition rather particular to mainland Southeast Asia. Before we begin, I would like to welcome you to or back to my channel. And without further ado, please enjoy the video. To begin, it's advantageous to understand the concept of a yantra. Yantras possess intricate meanings, but fundamentally they serve as instruments for meditation. Yantras are believed to facilitate mental equilibrium and guide individuals towards a spiritual path. These encompass various forms, with geometrical diagrams being the most prevalent. Yantras can be donned, enacted, or meditated upon, and they are attributed with a plethora of benefits as they symbolize cosmic or divine principles employed to concentrate one's thoughts. Yantras are predominantly affiliated with Hindu and Tantric traditions. In contrast, Buddhist meditation practices frequently encompass visualization, mindfulness, and the utilization of mantras while also emphasizing the use of other symbolic elements like mandalas and sacred texts as aids for meditation and spiritual growth. Typically, yantras are confined to sacred geometrical designs. Nonetheless, yantra tattoos merge Buddhist sacred texts and Hindu sacred geometrical patterns with depictions of animals and deities, likely stemming from pre-Hindu and pre-Buddhist traditional animistic beliefs that are unique to mainland Southeast Asia. In effect, yantra tattoos combine Buddhist, Hindu, and traditional animistic belief practices. In Cambodia, historical records indicate that Khmer warriors adopted yantras, known as yants, as a form of protection in battle against rival kingdoms like the Cham, applying them directly to their skin, effectively using these tattoos as a type of armor. This practice may have drawn inspiration from Sue Yant, which were linen vests inscribed with yants worn over the chest since ancient times. Pre Funanese references to sacred tattoos in what is now northern Thailand further suggest the early presence of this tradition among people across mainland Southeast Asia. In the realm of yantras, it's unusual to find figural forms, but Sankya tattoos are an exception to this rule. Mainland Southeast Asia possesses two distinct tattooing traditions, one developed in Cambodia and Thailand and utilizing the Khmer and Kham script, and another developed in Burma and practiced by the Shan and Northern Thai using the Burmese script. However, the latter should not be confused with another tattoo tradition unique to Myanmar. The Shan tattoos known as Pants are tattoos that start at the waist and extend down to the knees. These tattoos are primarily decorative and symbolize a man's maturity. Similar tattoos had been noted among people of the regions of Lana and Lan Shang. Moreover, there is another tattooing tradition particular to Thailand, wholly separate from Sankyant. In Thailand, the culture of tattooing doesn't seem to be associated with the ruling elite in modern Thailand. Instead, it is more commonly associated with the underprivileged rural population and those in considered disorderly. In Bangkok from the 18th to 19th century, for example, authorities traditionally marked the wrists of many individuals, a practice managed by the Department of Registration. This served to keep records, compile statistics, and determine the social status, military conscription obligations, and taxations of certain classes of males. The practice of tattooing for administrative purposes seems to date back to early days of Bangkok, with King Toxin formalizing it in 1774. Some records suggest that these traditions can be traced even further back to King Narai, who marked servants on their wrists to distinguish them from the general population. However, the rules regarding sacred Buddhist tattoos are a wholly distinct cultural tradition. The tradition of magical tattoos extends across various regions, spanning from Burma to Vietnam and Laos to Cambodia. 
This custom has ancient roots in the region, with historical accounts dating back several centuries. For example, Marco Polo, who explored the Irrawaddy region, recorded an intriguing observation about a city-state he called Kangigu. Current historical data has yet to locate this place, but it seems likely to be in modern central Thailand. He described the inhabitants adorning their skin with needlework, depicting intricate patterns such as lions, dragons, birds, and more. This artwork was inscribed across their faces, necks, chest, and arms, hands, and bellies, essentially covering their entire bodies. The people regarded these tattoos as a symbol of elegance and with the most extensive embroidery receiving the highest admiration from their peers. The tradition of creating protective tattoos by monks and revered laymen holds a deep-rooted history in Southeast Asia. These sacred geometric designs known as Sankyant are meticulously tattooed onto the skin to offer protection. These tattoos are believed to safeguard against various misfortunes, ranging from negative perceptions by others to providing physical protection against weaponry. Yants or Yantra, integral components of these tattoos, consist of Pali Buddhist suttas written in the Kalm script, referred to as Kanta. They also incorporate diagrammatic representation of Buddhist teachings. Additionally, protective yants are applied not only as tattoos, but also on amulets, parchment, cloth, or metal templates. Each tattoo is accompanied by a mantra and a set of behavioral rules that the bearer must strictly follow. Pali, considered a sacred language of scriptures, is believed to provide unmediated access to experiential truth, unlike other languages. The recitation of Pali suttas during rituals directly impacts those who chant and listen, whether it involves the transcendence of protection or a profound transformation of the bearer's physical and emotional state. The potency of these tattoos hinges on the bearer's commitment to upholding one of the five precepts, which include refraining from killing, stealing, engaging in improper sexual behavior, lying, and intoxication. There are also three general categories for these tattoos. Those that influence how others perceive and react to the bearer, either with affection or fear, those that enhance the bearer's oratorical abilities, and tattoos that establish a protective barrier around the individual, shielding them from potential harm by others or even dangerous animals. Sak Yant bestows the bear with special powers, offering influence and protection while simultaneously requiring adherence to certain moral precepts. Many believe that the more precepts the bearer follows, the more potent the tattoo becomes, though even observing just one precept can suffice for a person's tattoo. For the most powerful tattoos, the bearer is expected to adhere to food restrictions, which may involve fasting periods and food taboos. The consequence of breaking any precept can be significant, ranging from the tattoo losing its power to the bearer experiencing severe mental instability. Pali verses derived from Buddha's teachings are intricately woven into the tattooing process, recited as the tattoo takes shape. These verses constitute an integral part of the tattoo's enduring protective power. Additionally, the tattoos feature images that convey distinct abilities, with the belief that the portrayal of certain animals influence the tattoo's potency when the bearer is in need. For example, a tiger depicted on the chest is considered a safeguard against injuries. Throughout the tattooing ritual, the tattoo master softly chants Buddhist invocations to infuse the tattoo with its special powers. Payment for the tattoo is offered in the form of a customary Buddhist ceremony, encompassing incense, flowers, and monetary contributions in envelopes. Pain is regarded as an inherent aspect of the tattoo process. With the endurance of this discomfort seen as a means to clear the mind of cluttered emotions, it plays a role in the process of bestowing protection upon the bearer. Once the tattoo is completed, the master bestows blessings by blowing on the crown of the head while reciting Buddhist benedictions. This act activates the tattoo, and individuals often report experiencing a profound sense of peace afterward. Tattoo masters are even known to adjust the power of a tattoo based on their assessment of the wearer's ability to handle its full force. They might do so by omitting the last letter of the calm script, or altering the portrayal of an animal with a shorter tail. However, owning a tattoo doesn't obligate an individual to lead a morally upright life. It simply requires them to maintain the power of the tattoo by upholding at least one precept. 
The source of power for these tattoos lies in practicing austerities and abstaining from conventional human behaviors. Individuals adorned with tattoos aren't inherently bound by morality. In many cases, people with tattoos employ them as license to partake in a life of transgression. With the notable exception of the five Buddha tattoo, tattoos exist in a morally neutral realm. The stipulation of being a Buddhist and adhering to the five precepts at all times arises from the water oath taken during the tattooing process. The substantial consequences of breaching these precepts emanate from their solemn water oath. The effectiveness of tattoos remains independent of the individual's intent. If one utilizes these tattoos for benevolent purposes, they are likely to become a better person. Conversely, using them for malevolent intentions can steer an individual towards further immoral actions. However, the misuse of tattoos is believed to eventually catch up with the person, leading to a painful or violent death. Tattoo artists need not only interest in manual dexterity required to operate the needle, but also must possess the knowledge and power necessary to create effective tattoos. This knowledge encompasses understanding the kanta used in crafting the protective charms and reciting them during the tattooing process. Reciting kanta relies on memory, and tattoo artists must have an extensive repertoire of these incantations. While the knowledge of this is crucial, it remains a necessary but not sufficient condition for creating powerful tattoos. Proficiency in the kanta and tattooing skills can be acquired, but the most pivotal condition involves gaining access to the essential power required for crafting effective tattoos. Power for tattoos generally emanate from three main sources. Firstly, it derives from the tattoo artists themselves, cultivated through the practice of discipline and restraint. Secondly, it passed down through the tattooers' teachers and the lineage of instructors they are a part of. Lastly, power can be drawn from the Buddhas and the objects associated with them. For powerful tattoos or amulets, as mentioned before, an individual must exercise restraint and adhere to at least one precept at all times, although this primarily serves to stabilize the power within the tattoo. The main source of power for tattoos is the tattoo artist who created it, as well as the inherent power embedded in the kanta. Monastics who have already embraced a life of renunciation no longer require the protection of tattoos. For those who continue to be engaged in the worldly realm rather than pursuing detachment, i.e. the person having the yant inscribed on them, tattoos serve as a source of protection. Those endowed with the power are expected to exhibit benevolence toward their followers and employ their power for the protection and assistance of their dependents, contingent upon the behavior of those dependents. In conclusion, the world of sacred tattoos in Southeast Asia is a realm where art, spirituality, and discipline converge. These intricate designs serve as not only powerful talismans, but also as a reflection of the profound cultural and spiritual heritage of the region. Sakyant are not merely ink on the skin. They represent a rich tapestry of beliefs, rituals, and cultural traditions that continue to captivate and inspire us today. The harmony of artistry, spirituality, and discipline encapsulated within these tattoos is a testament to the enduring allure of this ancient practice. And if you made it this far, I thank you for joining on this journey on the history and culture of sacred tattoos in Southeast Asia. I hope you've gained a deeper appreciation for the intricate world of Sankyat and the profound meanings they hold for those who bear them. If you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe and give it a little like, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks and goodbye.